I'm back for part two. So part two of Genius season three, Aretha episode two. Oh my goodness. This was a hard episode for me to watch. First of all, the first time I played, I was walking around and doing stuff around my house. Um, and then the second time, I I couldn't get into it right away. But by the third time that I played it, I got into it, okay? I was like, oh, okay, okay, okay. I need to sit down. I need to sit down and watch this. A lot to cover. Okay. When it opened up, she, Aretha was singing at the club. And I thought to myself, I bet those white folks was like, we not clapping because you being a little bit loud. Like I remember I seen something and um, they said, when you sing, <laughs> you don't want to be screaming. <laughs> and that's what it kind of gave off to me. The video show, it showed Cynthia screaming. I was like, yeah, they didn't clap for you girl. Cause you were screaming and hollering the song. You wasn't singing it. It wasn't from the gut. It was like, ah. And it, 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 it was bothering me a little bit. It was loud. It was loud. So I was like, I, I see why you didn't get no hand claps. Round of applause. <laughs> but I think Cynthia uh, has a beautiful voice. But when they were at home and the dad was visiting, I just thought it was interesting how Ted told her to sit down and she sat down. She didn't talk back. She didn't say... I, I don't feel like sitting down. I, I, if I wanted to sit down, I would have sat down. She just was like, so daddy, I'm not going to be able to make it to your show tonight. <laughs> like, I'm not going to be able to make it to your sermon tonight. I'm so sorry, daddy. And he was like, I'm on the daddy side. I'm on CL side, okay? When you make a commitment to somebody and you say you're going to do something, unless you're going to die, Unless you're going to die, you should keep that commitment. You should keep your word. I can't stand a person who say they're going to do something and they don't do it. They turn out to do something totally different. It irks my nerves. It irks me because I'm not that type of person. If I say I'm going to do something, I try to do it to the best of my ability. And I know myself. I'm going to at least let you know ahead of time. She let him know the day of. I can't stand no person like that. But, you know, daddy called her out and was like, I don't know why you sitting up here working in these little shabby shows, shabby clubs, when you can't even pay your bills. I'm paying all your bills and all your food on this table. So anything I ask you to do, you should be doing it. And, and Ted, old broke, broke your joke self, gonna say, we don't need your money. We don't need it. We don't need it. But you're taking it and you're eating it, though. You're taking and eating. So clearly you do need it. Because if you didn't need it, you wouldn't be eating. I digress. You got a husband who can't even take care of you. Sad. Uh, oh, the other thing, what was so funny um, is that, her, again, here, here her daddy is talking out his neck. You know, he did make a point, though. If he paying your bills, you should be there whenever he call. Whenever your daddy call, you should be there. But he didn't have to disrespect her like that, especially in her house. That's her house, okay? You don't sit up there and be like, I pay your bills, baby. I cook your food. I, I mean, I buy your food, and I do this, and I do that for you. I don't think that's the time. You could, you could invite me over your house. Invite me over your house and then talk to me like that. But don't talk to me like that in my house. But she, Aretha, again, handled it so well. She handled it so beautifully. She said, I understand if you're too tired to come to my show tonight because of the flight. I totally understand if you don't make it. I was like, I need to learn, learn some of those manners. You know, she didn't fuss. She didn't fight. She didn't get all upset in her feelings. She just politely told him, you don't have to come if you don't want to. I completely understand and walked off. I was like, just rub a little bit of that on me. Just 
a little bit. Because I would have been all in my feelings. If I was the daddy, I would have been in my feelings. And if I was Aretha, I would have been all in my feelings. I would have been like, excuse me, you can't make it. You know, I would have said exactly, you gave me your word. But I would have pressed even harder. Like, no, you, okay, so I think you understand where I'm going to have to go with that, okay? <laughs> and if I was Aretha, I'd be like, excuse me, there's the door. But she needed that money. That's the thing. She couldn't, she couldn't check him, I don't feel like. You know, that's two people she couldn't check because she needed them. Kids. <laughs> Moving on. Um. So the next day she had a meeting with a producer of the Steve Allen show. And the husband is a little tipsy. He's not being professional at all in the meeting. And I'm just like, is this man not connecting the dots of you are meeting with, let's just be real, a white person. And their lifestyle is completely different. Their lifestyle and upbringing is completely different than ours. So it's not that we have to adjust ourselves, but we need to act like our parents raised us correctly and he was acting like his mama didn't tell him right or wrong um the other surprising thing that i realized is that the dad still came to her show after and she had the nerve to be mad that he missed her show like excuse me ma'am excuse me you better be glad i'm here for this meeting and I'll get to that later. You better be glad that I'm here for this meeting. Because uh, clearly you couldn't even make it to my sermon. And sing a little whoop de whoop de whoop <laughs> The daddy better than me because I would have been real petty. Real petty, okay? So the man politely tells her, no, you can't come to the show. Uh, because the husband was pushing and the the one thing that I did observe, rightfully so, is that people don't address that man at all. They don't care for that man at all. They that that that, that man was like, anyways, Aretha. <laughs> anyways, um, he was like, so what? What you want to do? Are we gonna do the show or what? You were so amazing. I've heard so many great things about you. Like, don't even care that this man is sitting at the table with them, okay? Have a wonderful day and got up. And she's the only one who can connect the dots of saying he said no. You didn't get that? What does whoop de whoop got to do with this? He clearly was saying no, honey. Um, Yeah, I, I, I was also wondering in the previous um episode in episode one when he said all of our hard work has paid off um why she felt like he didn't do nothing when he clearly got you to this point that's what i thought and then i seen that meeting and i was like oh no he didn't get her there <laughs> he didn't get her there she got herself there Clearly, it's being saw. She was her own manager. She was her own representative. Like, she didn't need none of them. She had it from the beginning. She was the talent and the manager and the producer and the director, everything of her life. Anyways, I was like, this dude didn't do nothing. No, it ain't no we. It ain't no our show or we made it and our money. No. Oh. Oh, thank God. Okay. Drinks on me. He was so um he was so mad that the man told him no. Told him no. No, 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 no. I'm not gonna have her on the show. That he gonna say drinks on me. Uh on you? Because the last thing I remember is you ain't got no job. 
And is it drinks on you or is it drinks on Aretha? I'm just trying to figure this out. Then he brings her the drink and he said, I'm going to get you another one, baby. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But first of all, Aretha, you should have told him, don't buy, don't get you another one. Don't touch my money. I'm glad you start putting your money in your pocket purse, okay? Because that dude over there was running your money to the ground, buying drinks for the whole bar. So she goes and meet with her record company. And the man refuses to let her go outside of her genre of jazz. I never knew Aretha Franklin was a jazz artist. I've never heard any of her jazz music. I've only heard her soul music. I'm sorry. And I, I felt like I agreed with her. You know, you have um, you have uh, Ray Charles doing his own thing. You have um, um, she basically said she wanted to be uh, like those artists on his wall, known for her own personal identity, her own creativity. And he wasn't really trying to hear that, but he was like, "You making me some money, so I might as well." see what you can do what i didn't like about that part was he threatened her like db threatened jocelyn okay threatened the hell out of her and said i'll put you back on the circuit i was like wow sir if it doesn't work you can just go back to the gospel music i'm like oh oh wow we're threatening like, no support, no nothing. Okay. I was like, you better watch out with DB. They flash back to when Aretha is a child on the gospel circuit. She sings. She's a little, you know, uh, shaky in her vocals. Um, she doesn't feel that confident in herself or whatnot. And she's uh, talking to the other woman that sung. And she, you know, com commends her and everything and, you know, tries to imitate her. She goes t up to a man with a guitar. A man. Looks like a teenager. Looks like he could be 19, 20, 17 to 20. Th those ages. Uh, but a man. And she's 12. So... She goes up to him and they're talking a little bit and you can tell, you can tell that he's, um, preying on her. You just get that sense. You're, you're kind of hanging too long on her, like having a big conversation, um, and telling her things like, you know, you have a great voice, commending her and everything, which is okay. But there is a line. There is a line that you go with a conversation with a young girl and you are a grown man. And you also want to have another woman there, not per se two men, because that even looks worse, as I'm going to talk about later. So when you do talk or commend young women, you don't want to give off the impression that you... Cause women take things again we're emotional creatures so especially young girls she may not differ uh have the differ of um this is just a friend or he likes me and she was at that age of liking boys let's just be real and so i took it as he was preying on her that's what i got from it it kind of gave me an off put, like, mm, oh, she needs to back up. But where is the daddy? Where is that at? Oh, yeah, let's see. He's over there with some other woman again. Getting flirted by other church-going women, bringing him food, talking about, I got a sweet tooth. Get, sit down. And they show his her real daddy. I'm like, well... I ain't gonna lie, daddy was handsome. He It ain't like he was ugly or anything, but, but you a man of God. 
How are you the man of God and you you messing around with all these women, all these girls? Like I said, I think it's insinuating some addictions and stuff and some other things. So they go back to when she's an adult and her and her sister is at this club where Lena Horne is performing. I thought it was so hilarious how they was talking so much crap about uh, Lena Horne, uh, a beautiful woman, but she can't sing. And I said, you know what? When I did see the Wiz, I was like, girl, you can't hit that note. You're not hitting that note. Me, 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 me. Okay. I was like, yeah, Lena Horne could not really sing. But I was like, the person along next to her couldn't sing that well either, Diana Ross. I, I was like, home, that's my song right there. But I was like, them notes, I can't hit them. But I said, Diana couldn't hit them either. And I like how they were um, um, bringing each other up, encouraging one another, saying, you know, I, girl, I'm hating on you. I'm hoping I make it too. I'm wondering if you going to make it. We over here on different um, record companies, and neither one of us could get a top number one, a top five nothing. But look at Lena, who, who can't even carry a note, making all the number ones. Mm-hmm. Better get them looks. But the one thing that um, Aretha said is that Lena Horne was doing the music that she wanted to do, speaking her mind, seeing how she felt. And that's what she wanted to do. So, And she had beautiful gowns, and she was elegant and all these things. And so she decided to ask her pimp daddy, we find out, can I get a moment? I was with the sister like, I'm so tired of you. Tired. Bye. Go. Away. Ted. God. He had the audacity to say that he was a pimp. She gonna say, I don't like the, the lifestyle you live in. But you're living it with him. You're living it with him. And so... It's like you, you don't like the lifestyle, but you're living it with him. You're allowing it to happen. Oh, there go that word again. Allowing. Allowing, okay? We don't want to allow people to do things to us.